Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? None, none. You know my dad. Well, go on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. And I mean all, I mean all. Just Google us. We're on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it. But if you want to see all our visuals, you got to go over to our YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification. But if you want to see the exclusive content, because we do hide some exclusive content now, you got to, under each and every video, including this one right here in the description section, there is a link that says join our membership. Click that link and join our membership. And that's how you can support a brand so we can keep doing what we're doing every day. Keep bringing you great content every day because y'all see us on the street and be like, man, I love what you're doing. Keep it up. Keep pushing that content. How can we support it? Should we buy merch? What should we do? This is what you do. Join our membership. Thank you in advance and we love you. And if you want to buy some merch, we'll get you that too. Whatever you <laughs> want, we got you. You know what I'm saying, man? It's going down, man. We got a guy in here today from out of Compton. Bompton, California. California. Bompton, California. I've been right. corrected. He's here. Y'all know the voice. Y'all know the vibe, man. Ayatollah Marv is in the building. OG Pyro's in the building. That's Stand we are. up. We are. We are. There we are. There we are. Bompton, California. <laughs> we don't set trip. We set trend. Oh, man. From the famous hey, Melvin Farm. Man, listen, man. You got me in so much stuff, man. Uh, Michael Jackson, uh, the comment. It, 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 it flooded, it went viral. Everybody was trying to understand how you came up with that. They started talking about the date. They said the date was, uh, uh, it was in 1984. That, 84, that, that he had yeah. got his hair burned. He got his hair now, burned. Explain to me just, did he, but the but the overdose that you uh, the body, happened. The, the, the incident happened in 1979. Now, from what I understand it now, it was a lookalike that was in 1984 that they concocted the hair burning to go to the alopecia to say that his skin was changing while they were in corporation of making the clone. Wow. And you know, in 84, I want to say that's the first time I see the glove. Right, right. The the, the, the silver one glove that he would wear? Yes, sir. That's the first time I remember seeing it. Now, it might have been before that. I don't know, but I, I, that's the time I recollect seeing okay. it. Okay, pretty much so. And and what is it? Say, what was the significance of the one silver glove? I That's what I don't know. And that's another hidden message, just like in Thriller, him coming up out of the grave. His family didn't believe in that. So everything is called subliminal seduction. They tell you what it is, and you see it in plain sight, and you think it's something else. Wow. Now, everybody was mad at me until a white woman confirmed it, that they found his remains on Neverland. Why did they call it Neverland? I don't know. Why did they call it Neverland? Never, never, never. Ne Whether he dead, you never going to forget Michael Jackson. Huh? No, never. At the time of, it came up at the time that he was dealing with a child molestation. Michael didn't play with girl, little kids like that. Not I, Allegedly, I was not there. You dig what I'm saying? Before I get this slack again, and I don't care whether... Uh, um, Elvis Presley was the king of rock, the king of pop, yeah, yeah, the king. I don't give a f what king he was. He was a king, goddamn it. <laughs> don't worry about that. You understand? These coons be nitpicking. He said you uh, didn't get it right. Huh? The king of R&B. He, he wasn't the king of R&B. Okay, the king of pop. He was a he was a king. Who is the king of R&B? I don't know. They say R. Kelly is the king of R&B. Okay, R. Kelly is the king of R&B. I, I Rob Banks. I don't care nothing about who's the king, and I'm just record. Shoot the messenger. <laughs> so you tell the story the way you told it. You didn't say. You say somebody in prison shared that story. No, no, no. I didn't say somebody in prison. One of my homies, a guy from Piru Street, okay, was a light man in Las Vegas. And he worked for the Jackson family. He was one of the first light men in Vegas. He worked for Ben Vereen, Bill Cosby. We had. Pave, anything we needed on Las Vegas Boulevard, 76 on. 
until this incident happened in 1979. Then he went dark. Went to his house. He wasn't at the house. Went there like, man, where in the hell is Leonard at? You understand me? Uh, like, man, I go to prison. I get out of prison in 1990. He's like under hood on crack cocaine. And he had told me this story. And when he know it was 86, he first told me the story. In 86? In 86, he told me, man, what happened to you, man? You, he like, man, this happened. And they start corrupting everybody that was associated with that. Wow. And I had to go under. You're like, man, he gave up a 200. This man was making $250,000 a year wow. in the 70s and wasn't selling drugs. Wow. And went from that to nothing. So I'm like, okay. Then when I got out in 90, he told me the same story. Mark, remember what I told you about that? Man, it's going bad. It's whoop de whoop And I'm like, okay. So I've been keeping it all this time, but I've been start researching the activities. Now, when you research the activities, you start looking at the changes. Well, one of the brothers in the Nation of Islam on the time that Michael was deceased, the, the clone Michael was deceased, when they took the clothes off, when they took his clothes off, his nuts was pink. A black man, you know, <laughs> you know we don't, everything, that's why no, I'm wait a minute, they say when they took it for, for, for the autopsy? They never, he never had a, well, okay, there's another situation we go to. When they, they came in and took him, they said they were taking him to a chamber for his body to be frozen. That's what the family wanted, allegedly. So they was wrapping him and t putting him in this thing for this chamber, Mysteriously, right after that, they said they cremated him. Whoa. Not that cremation is against Jehovah's Witness, but it, they didn't cremate jo Joe. They buried Joe out next to the, the grave that Michael Jackson ain't in. Wow. So now we went from he was supposed to be frozen to having a secret cremation. But now in this, in toxicology, when you die from an overdose, they're supposed to get blood samples. They have no blood samples. No. Nothing at all that has the DNA for the clone Michael Jackson. So he's supposed to have two children, right? Right. Now the woman said, well, no, it was in vitro fertilization. We never had ugly she is. She wasn't all to get it from anybody. But she said, no, she didn't have sex with Michael. And so now when it came to them taking a DNA on the children, the the doctor that supposed to did it, he said that the sperm was his. Wow. So he, the son is not Michael Jackson, it's his son. <laughs> so it went over everybody's head, now they got $100 million. Each of the kids. Wow. But they have no trace of Jackson DNA. So do you feel like that was a that was just a plot to, to take to get it's control always of, the, a plot. of the money? It's always the control. They said they made $3 billion for a council world tour that they knew wasn't going to never happen. So since he died, accidentally, uh, accidental death, overdose at hands of another, what did Conrad do? He from Texas. He didn't know no better. He was following protocol. But they didn't arrest none of the other doctors who were supposed to have been injecting him with that, huh? No, no, they didn't. We make all of us the fall guys. For 15 years, he was with the Pinkerton detective, white people. When it came for his demise, the last three years of this situation, when it came to the effect of him being accused of messing with kids, they hired the Nation of Islam. Why? Negro don't know nothing. We just impressed to be around, huh? Wow. And when you see the Nation of Islam, the ones that did security, they wasn't ranked FOI. They were some young boys. Wow. No, it, it definitely, like I said, it's, it's mysterious how Mike moved, how he would go here and go there, how they portrayed him. And you made the statement that his mom really, you didn't see them together much after, you know, after. You didn't see them together at all for 15 years. And he was a mama's boy. He was, when my partner, he was telling me, Leonard said like, man, when they used to go out, Michael would be at home with his mom. He never went out and hung out with girls. He never did this and this and that. He was, uh, he was a mama's boy. He didn't, 
go out and express itself. But now, after this 79 to 84, you never seen him in any family pictures, Easter, Mother's Day, Thanksgiving. Oh, Michael called us. But he was never there present at any family function. Wow. What was the disconnect? What was the disconnect? You know, last time we talked, they it's a thing where these artists, they keep getting getting in a different situation. It's a new case just popped up with NBA Youngboy. They he went they went up there to Utah. Somebody told me. Yeah, and they, they took him and uh arrested him for all type of guns and all kind of stuff. Um he beat the first case, federal case. Now he's back dealing with them again in Baton Rouge. I think they took him back down to BR, you know, to Baton Rouge where okay. he where he originally, you know, caught his uh cases at. Yeah. Um what happens when they keep seeing you in these courtrooms like but that? But see that's that that's the action that these are projects designed to fail. And and it's all a a a plot and a conspiracy to uh dismantle black masculine and to make young kids believe that this is relevant and I can beat this and I can do this and then you end up getting all this time. I, I don't I don't know what the case was, but I know the scenario. They talk about NBA young boy faces here in next week after pres prescription fraud ring arrest in Utah. A Pres prescription fraud ring. Okay. So you're a rapper and you using using scripts to get lean and uh, Zantax. That's that's what you're accused of. That's that's pretty much what it what what it's saying. You know, and and, and then and then it, it talked two days ago. It says how NBA young boys gun arrest and B and BR PD federal probe are linked. Like it's just multiple different things that they're coming at him with. Right. Now I don't know if, uh, after you beat a case or whatever. It's a thing where he been on house arrest the whole time in yeah. Utah. He ain't never even well, moved. See, and that's the whole thing. It just when I was when I was in the street. See, white America will let you bail out because they know this is the only thing you know, and they just mount cases on mount cases on. Mount. They never beat a case. Okay, you just go. We gonna discontinue this. We we'll have you on house arrest, and then but you can go to Utah if you're on house arrest. How'd you get to Utah? It's like they they moved this whole thing up there. And, and and that's the thing. Like he, you think he's doing that just to get away from everybody, to where he don't get in no trouble. But then you still hearing all these different charges coming at him. It's like I don't know, man. Like it's something to where we have false illusions of who we are, and he, not, he believe he's above the law. You know, Puffy, Puffy, his his real case ain't doing. You know, Puffy was weird when you met him. You know what I'm saying? We've been knowing that. But when he crossed White America, when he crossed Diego and did that lawsuit on them instead of him just shutting up, they're gonna go to the end of the world to ruin Puffy. I heard today he was supposed to, somebody was supposed to get indicted. One wow. of his, his, his pilot, a white pilot is supposed to take a deal to turn over, and he gonna take a deal. Yeah. You know? So, and it's not even about whether they put Puffy in the cell next to R. Kelly, but they gonna ruin him. Through public opinion. And you don't hear white folks talking about him. We do. No, we talk about it more than everybody. Everybody now, bring it up, man. We are the most critical of each other. Let a cracker do something. Even, what's the man they was talking about him today? Um, uh, the one that's supposed to hide yourself was messing with kids. Uh, mm -hmm. Goldstein? Uh, Epstein. Uh, Epstein, yeah. Get, get the well, name think, right because they'll be cussing me out about Epstein, the wrong yeah. Epstein. And they were talking, but they after that, after they killed Epstein, they shut it down. They didn't keep on going. It's crazy to me. Like, do you think that it's people that say Jay Z will be next? Why do they keep saying that? Because he's he's the next one on the list. He he the next big man. They, they Kanye didn't filed out on him. Kanye didn't play crazy. So they 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 leave him where he's at. You know he he played the game with one hundred percent. You know what I'm saying. So now they they didn't made him not relevant to other black people. Yeah. Right. So you you looking at Kanye as a fool as this and this and that because white America doesn't doesn't let it go like that. You dig what I'm saying. So now Jay Z and Beyonce they're the couple that's been together. And, and doing their thing, and 
Oh, my boy T here. Yeah, that's yeah, right. That's go. right. They're yeah. a couple that's doing their thing. Yeah. So they they don't want any black mega couple to be together. Name them. You know. Yeah. You got Danzel and his wife. Mm -hmm. Um, Morgan Freeman and his wife. Angela Bassett and her. And her Angela husband. Bassett and her husband. But you don't have but a handful of blacks that's had long-term relationships and been able to survive. Let me ask you this. I got to get you over here, man. A lot of people, uh, you, they, going back to Biggie, they say, you know, that they, they talk about the Illuminati when it comes down to black money for some reason. They say uh, uh, P. Diddy, you know, like like Biggie was a sacrifice. Everybody got to kiss the run. I and, mean, and, you look and, at... In order for his success to blossom. What do you think when you hear people saying... Things I, like that. Hey, it's, if it walk like a duck, quack like a duck, useless duck, ain't it? It's, you, we look aside from Biggie to 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 Suge Knight. Okay, when Suge's artist died, when the plot came to kill Suge and Pac end up dying, Suge didn't go all the way up. He went all the way down. <laughs> His life went in shabble because he wouldn't cooperate with white America. But now Biggie died. And Puffy go all the way up. <laughs> wow. So you got to sacrifice something. Like I told you before, I was there the day that Biggie died. The, when they first drove up, Captain Shaheed Muhammad approached Puffy. Hey, Puff, if you need us, let us know. Finds out that this dude, Greg Keaton, was one of the police that approached Shaheed and told him, like, man, we got this. This is our detail. So Greg Keaton was there that day with Reggie Wright. They were there on, ta on task. And now Biggie come up. So now they put it on, well, Poochie did it. But the first, it was Amir Muhammad, huh? Peanut, smooth shave with a, Poochie didn't have a beard ever since. <laughs> he uh, looked like a little bulldog. Ain't nothing about, but it was convenient to blame Poochie. After he did the same way with Orlando or uh, Baby Lane, I, all of this time him supposed to have been killing uh, Pac or associated with killing Pac, he was never arrested. Ain't that strange in California? I don't care if somebody just said I did something. I'm going to jail. That's real. But they never alleged that Baby Lane did it until after he did. Wow. So I had, I had, I was reading this article, cause you know me, I'm always reading this, right? <laughs> I want to read this part. I want you to tell me what you think about this situation, right? It says, Anne Hathaway said she was forced. You know who Anne Hathaway is? No. She from Compton? No. no, 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 she's an actress. Um, she came in, um, she was Catwoman in Batman before. She was um, Diaries of... Um, Man, of like one. No, not that one. She was with the Queen of England, and she was like the the princess. <coughs> she well, you wouldn't watch that type of movie. I'm trying to think of what, what movie. Twenty Seven Dresses. Um, she's a black girl. She's a white girl. That's why you don't know yeah, her. So why would I, why but listen to the situation. Okay. But listen to the situation. Okay, she said she was forced to make out with a whole bunch of dudes while auditioning in Hollywood, while casting directors are denying it was them so all of them but the thing when i was reading the whole article all of the different movies that she came in all of the casting directors are denying that they forced her to do something like this but i would think that when if you are auditioning for a movie and it has kissing roles they want to make sure that you have chemistry with the actors that they chose mm -hmm. to play these parts so wouldn't they have you you know, audition by kissing that person to make sure that it looked good on screen and so forth to be able right. to get a role. Right. But she's saying she had to kiss like a whole bunch of, make out with a whole bunch of different dudes. Maybe they had to try to figure out which one actually but worked. What you, okay, if, if but you, she's saying that's wrong for them to be forcing people to do they're that. They're not forcing you to do nothing. All you had to do was leave the set. You know, you say, well, it's just the, the, the same issue I have with, and I used to like, I mean, really like her, um, Taraji P. Henson. Mm -hmm. Taraji complaints about color purple, right? But when she started with Paramount, Warner Brothers wasn't giving her no roles. She wasn't working for white America. But when she came in, they offered her, she had to sign a contract. 
when she signed the contract, she was good with it. Everything was all right when she was broke and she needed that money. Now, once the movie goes the way it is, she's trying to count mm. Tyler Perry's pockets. We don't get paid. With, so what? And she and all this complaint she did, she still ain't got an audition from Paramount, Warner Brothers, or none of them other cracker groups. But we're easy to say something about each other. The same thing uh, when he talked about Cat Williams. And for the things that Cat Williams said, I don't I believe he's telling the truth. And what he said about those people, they could have been stealing this. But he never indicted one white man. He's not going to mess his check up, huh? Mm -mm. But the I, thing about that I can't stand is the fact that when I was reading the article, they're saying that because what people are doing, interviewing the people who film she's been in to try to figure out who is it that, you know, forced her to do such things. But you shouldn't have to figure out who it was. You should just say who it was oh it was this director it was such and such people shouldn't have to be wondering and going around and, and nobody has confirmed how did confirmed. I force you and you got them fair exchange ain't no robbery mm -hmm. if you ain't bringing nothing but that's all you got to offer mm -hmm. that's real you know what I'm saying oh well he did me like this and he took advantage of me but all them lobster dinners I paid for the trips to the Bahamas and found out that you, sh you had secondhand sex mm -hmm. like what did I I wasted money at least she got the role and now they complain. That's the imbalance of women that I see. Once the deed is done, you cry foul. Years later. Years later. Y'all don't care if it's a day later, damn it. You knew the job was tough when you took it. Mm. <laughs> I, I, if you didn't, you should have known. So, okay, you, do you have kids? Mm, a gang. <laughs> so I, I have sex for purpose, not pleasure. <laughs> I masturbated for 25 years. If, I, if you ain't had a baby in 90 days or $100,000 in a Mercedes Benz, you have been discontinued. Oh, wow. Now, the reason why I was asking you, because I don't know if you heard about Russell Simmons' rant that he's been doing about his daughter, because his Aoki, daughter, uh, Aoki, um, she is now dating Victoria Asaf, but he's 65, and she's like, I think in her twenties. Okay. This is this is the daughter of Russell Simmons and Kimora Lee. Okay. How do you feel about that situation? His daughter dating a sixty-five year old man. Shit, I'm, I applaud homegirl. She make it going down the easy road. Why why you want to go up the rough side of the mountain? I think he's a billionaire too. He's a he's yeah. A, he is a billionaire. Uh, yeah, I mean, he ain't he's broke, a white, you know. A white billionaire. Yeah. No, he ain't doing shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Russell just mad. You understand? Many young women he didn't. Why in there? Shit. <laughs> Man, I, Russell, come on. Russell, they argued about that, is Yes, he but, is. He's upset. But that's his daughter. You know he, he was somebody else's daughter. He was too. That's true, but you on know. Sherm, but and he didn't do all kind of medicines to, to keep it up, to get it up. But you know how men are. Men be like, okay, they always say it's their bad luck, especially when they were dogs and dating all these young girls or dating all these females and dogging them out. It's like, you know what? They're the ones who always end up with a whole bunch of girls as yeah, children. Yeah, you're okay. But you're okay. But I still. Because it's going to come right back around to them. Come around. You know, it, hey, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. So the people, like, the girls that he was messing with, they had fathers too. He wasn't thinking about them at that time. And so don't think about what your daughter doing. I mean, you know, it, at least she ain't with, with some thugged out nigga from Compton. That's true. Beating her up, beating her down. I just uh, read an article. Uh, this chick sent me an article trying to justify her life and says, if a man comes in a woman's bedroom and the bed is like an explorer with bad strokes, he knows she got good. No, uh -uh. she got, she over with. Uh -uh. She, 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 her, she got a hundred thousand miles. She been beat to death. Mm. If her bed is, uh -uh. Let me ask you this. But why do older men, why would an older man love or want to be with a younger woman like that? Especially, I don't know if he, I didn't look into to see if he even have children. But say if he even have children, his children is around his age, but he's dating kids. Because I've heard some men say, I won't date kids my children I don't children do nothing age. over 30. Now, I would rather give a young woman a Rolex watch than an old woman the time of day. Wow. So mm. let me ask you this, man. Uh, the mother, Kamora, she was upset about it. She was upset about She's it. very upset about it. She says that, you know, this is just not right, you know, okay. and, and upset with her what, daughter. What, how old is the daughter, 11 or 12? No, she's, tw I think. She's yeah, a grown woman. 23, you like said 20, 23. Yeah, she, she's, she's yeah. a grown woman. She's, she's not a age. 
She wasn't been a virgin in a long time. I don't know time. how old she was when she got with Russell. Huh? I don't know how old her mom was when she got with Russell. I think 18 or 19. <laughs> Kamara? Yeah, I think she, she was young as hell. Supermodel, just pretty much re maxing and relaxing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she was young. Russell was older than her. So I guess it was good for the goose. And you know, I'm just, I, I can't hold. And so, okay, I, I, being the devil's advocate here, either you didn't instruct your daughter right. If your daughter go out and mess with some old man, he, you told him to go get a man with money. And she followed instruction. Now, you didn't put no age gap on it, did you? Man, baby, don't be messing with no broke niggas. Don't do this, because you know he went to nigga talk, and baby, you know these rappers, now stay away from them. So she find her, a, a, what they call honey hole, find her a soft spot. I don't know. I, wow. Would you, would you um, be in, what they call it, a, poly, a polygamy relationship, where you had multiple women together? I'm too much for one woman, not enough for two. Hell no, I can't remember names, <laughs> places. I may call you Charlie. For because I, I see this, uh, I saw this, um, there's a show on TLC where this man, he's a black guy too, have three mm -hmm. white women who sleep in a 12 foot bed and, and so they're all together all the time and they're totally happy with their relationship. That's what they say on the, mo on the screen. You are never totally happy. With there's three women. A, that you're in total, if it's three, I, everybody got a pecking order. That's a pimp, the hardest job he have, trying to keep holes in line. What you mean by pecking order? You got a bottom woman. Mm -hmm. Most pimps are authorized pimps. They got a, a woman that's the gangster, the whole crew. Right. And he keeps all of them in line. The pimp don't do it. You understand me? He, he can't control those emotions. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm a pimp, I rob banks. So I don't know that. <laughs> Allegedly, you dig what I'm saying? So. It's, it's difficult dealing with women and their attitudes. Even women dealing with you, a woman, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, and the things that go on in that chemistry, you have to be a dynamite dude in order to deal with all those personalities. Shit, I can't deal with me sometimes. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Megan the Stallion, speaking of, she, mm -hmm. she uh, her cameraman, uh, no, her. no, yeah, he, he's yeah. suing her because... They was out the country. It was a cameraman that she used. He was driving. He said he was forced to watch her have sex, sex with another woman. And he was it another her. woman. It was, it was another woman. woman. Oh, okay. It was another woman. It was two, three women. And he's upset, so he's suing her now. He gay? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so he's suing her now. Uh, he, he's upset about it. He's came See, after this, all this time. Yeah. He's, he's he's coming full fledged for a bag because he said that they they forced him and then threatened him. Not to not to say not anything to say about anything. It. So how you force me to, to watch and not say anything? All he had to do was close his eyes. But it's so unless he was driving. If he was it's driving, so he could. If you driving, you looking at the road. What is you looking at the road? You, it's a one that she ought to sue him for not wreck, for not for almost wrecking. Because I know that was something to see. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> So why, why do you think people are coming forward like this full man, I, 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 I'm going to tell, tell y'all some shit. Because and, 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 right? <laughs> uh, it's some shit that you can watch, right? I was with B. Brown. Bobby Brown. Yeah, I was with B. Brown. We was, we was over at the La Matage, right? And so everybody, you know, Mr. Telephone Man. Yeah. Everybody at him. So we did uh, um, Cedric the Entertainer show. And the, the girl that is would play the principal of Steve Harvey's show, she jumps all on 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 uh, um, on B Brown. He was supposed to take her back, so um, Vivica Fox slide in, right? So Vivica slide in. They go to dinner. We go to the La Matage. Me, him, and Tommy. Me and Tommy go to our room. So B Brown and and and. Uh, 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 Vivica Fox go to Bobby room. They go to Bobby room. They're in there about two hours, three hours. They doing their thing, whatever they doing. So Tommy says, "Hey, uh, what a uh, 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 water boy? Why don't you go and check Bob and see is everything okay?" 
So I'm like, okay. So I got the key. I go to the room. I go to the room. I go. It's like 12 o'clock at night. I go to the room. Bob in the room, butt asshole naked, laid out asleep. <laughs> Bob's out. Open, right? Yeah. Vivica Fox is laying between him, butt asshole naked with his d in her, with his d in her. <laughs> Oh, I be like, I said, damn if I'd have got that shot there, <laughs> I wasn't forced to watch, but I sure did. <laughs> wow, Hollywood, you man. Know what I'm saying? And, and Vivica's cool. I first met Vivica. We did set it off. Yeah, she, yeah. I don't know if you said that. Yeah, she, she did. She, you know, she a hood girl. You know, she, she, she about she it, about it. You know, and uh, uh, but it was just like I ain't never told nobody. But that do you stuff. think? I mean, they just, they just hit it off. They already knew each other, so they, uh, they just Who? hit it off. Uh, Bobby and uh, Vivica. No, she just, they that, just that, met. That was, that was her idol. You, you, you girls. Yeah, grew up cause like, she was Mr. Telephone. I'm always Mr. Telephone Man, Bobby Brown. You know. Uh, um, oh man. Uh, what, what is it? What's the other one? A uh, 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 tender wrong. Truth Tender about Rowdy, yeah, you know, like the this, sweeter, this, yeah. These are they idols. This is my prerogative. My Bobby. prerogative. This is hot right this, now, man. What? And Vivica trying to get on, man. They, she ain't trying to get on. She trying to get in. Oh, <laughs> 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 man, that's crazy, you man. Know, I'm just saying, hey, she, she hard, man. That's, hey, that's she, just how you know celebrity status is. It can go one or two ways, and then it can go all bad for you. You feel what I'm saying? So those are the things that they come around, man. If you, when I was with Mike, man, the groupies, it's girls I have sex with me just to be around you. But here's the deal. I want to go back to that. Vivica just came out recently, and she was t saying that her biggest regret was when Fifty was with her. He was trying to do, you know, he wanted to wind and down and keep her, you know. Put up, you know, treat her like a princess per right. se. But she's she not say, that type of person. But she says she wasn't into that, and she hate. That's the biggest regret she got okay. that she didn't, you know, feed into that pretty much. Yeah. Um, I was with her in Las Vegas uh, when they got the announcement that he wasn't messing. We were Tyrese. Was it Tyrese? I was with um, um, Fredro Starr. It was. We, they, they did a little bunk movie in Las Vegas. Okay. And Vivica was in the movie, and. Uh, when uh, 50 said, like, he he said it on a radio interview. He didn't call and tell her. He told him on the radio. He yeah, said, that's how she found out about it. And he was like, I'm done. And man, I find out she had been too busy. You know, why Why you have a used car and you can buy a new one? Yeah, this 50, and he hot at this time. Man, what? This, this you know, in the club. But that's, you but that's, in the club, that's another. Picture. That's another. He, from set it off, this was his eye. He loved her. He loved her. Like, man, I, I got to have her, whatever I got to get. And found out it wasn't what it was. <laughs> False advertisement. <laughs> I'm just saying, I ain't, man, I ain't been there. <laughs> man, that's crazy, man. Tell me, in today's day and age, the things that are going on, you see a lot of transgenders moving around. I see them on the internet. People are trying to talk about them. I saw this thing that I talked about. There was a high school kid who um, is a transgender, but he was now, he's transitioning from a boy to a girl. But they had him racing with females. And he dusted all the females. He was like, first, like way ahead. But you know that men are physically stronger and faster than females are. Do you think it's right to be able to have a transgender race women? Race women. That's above my pay grade. <laughs> I don't <laughs> the you have me about transgender. <laughs> no, y'all, America. <laughs> I keep it gangster. A homosexual is a homosexual. <laughs> I don't know nothing about no gender. Should a woman be running with a man is basically what you ask. Yes, me. even if they're trying to change and be a woman. What? what well, running that, track that, but, but by the same token, flip it. Why do a woman try to be a man? Should she be in the same category as a man? But if she's not trying to run against a man. Yes, she is. You got the man. I got some hoes that to try to box you. These girls. It's first time I ever got knocked out. I got knocked out by a dyke. <laughs> what? what? Is this How true? old were you? Huh? How old were you? I was you? like 13 and uh 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 Louise from the uh from the bottoms. I was in juvenile hall, right? And and this little girl Pat, she was from uh east uh, from Los Angeles and if you did good 
stuff took care of your room and stuff you had dances it was co-ed juvenile hall right mm -hmm. so uh we go to the dance and uh pat was a little green-eyed girl me and my my partners we go in there all the girls with their socks all the ro way rolled up were were lesbians the ones with their socks rolled down they were girly girls right so we so we sitting there dancing so louise walks up to me and like uh hey kenzie man you dancing too close to my girl like, what is you talking about close to your girl? Man, go on away from here. Man, I ain't gonna tell you again. All right, this is a girl. Little fat, dark skin chick. So we go on, we dancing again. Slow record come, home girl comes and pushes me away from her. I'm a girl, I'm talking. You better woo woo woo. Next thing I know, I wake up in the infirmary. What? <laughs> She dropped you. I, I, she didn't drop me. I didn't. I, they say allegedly I didn't fall. You understand? But when I get up, my face is heavy. I'm like, what the hell? I'm not that down. What am I? Where am I at? I look in the mirror. All this side of my face is swollen. I come back to the to the unit. Don't nobody even laugh at me. Like man, she hit you with a two piece. But Marv, you didn't even fall. Lip busted. Tooth loose. My, my Now, my homies, they was there on the scene, but I guess they didn't want to get it either. Mm -mm -mm. 13 years old, that boy. Is so, crazy. so they tell me, first time I've ever been knocked out. I ain't got knocked out since I was grown. This was the only time a girl did it. Wow. And so, when I, we didn't all plot it. Man, when we get back, man, we gonna go out to the field because we can go out to the field to play baseball and the girls are on this side, right? So, but. Three weeks, you know, young, you heal up in three or four days. We go out like, man, if we see this bro out there, man, we gonna get a bat. All three of us gonna go whoop the whoop the. We goes outside, we go to the baseball diamond. There she is. We grab the bats. She's just standing on the field. We start walking toward her, and all three of us thought at the same time. We didn't even say anything to each other. We just said, man. If one of us lose this bat and this girl get this bat, she going to kill all three of us. Oh, so wow. Can, wow. Just let that go. Man, that's crazy. You see this stuff happening because of the way they trying to, you know, push the, the you know, that, that whole narrative. Yeah. You know, um, it's just certain things like what we reading here now where you the all these cases out there. Read that. What it say? It says a transgender MMA fighter fractured the skull in multiple places of a biological female. The same MMA fighter almost killed a second biological female <clears throat> too. Is this fair to a real biological female? That's yeah, crazy. It's fair. You shouldn't have gotten the ring with that man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, men it's are some physically fight, it's stronger. It's some fights that you just don't go to. <laughs> so they knew, they knew this. Yeah, you don't right? take a, a knife in a, a gun fight. You knew this was a transient. What, what did you think? And she mad at you for being a real woman anyway? He mad at you? <laughs> and end up, I end up seeing this girl, Lucille, in 1982 in another prison. Now, this was 1964. I end up in 1982, I see her, I didn't know who she was at that time. She's still an old dyke, but she ain't grew no more, but I have. <laughs> God damn it. Man, so I guess I guess they're going to figure it out after they keep getting whooped, because I'm going to be honest with you, I, kind of, I agree with OG, uh, ain't no reason to go up in there and you know that this is a man. You know, they trans. But then, but when they're changing and so-called changing and changing you know, what? Whether they cut it off and they're trying to take all cut these. it off and make them more mad. Oh. <laughs> Shit, what the f Do you read the Bible? Do you know what you were? That's unit. right. Okay, and they were the most vicious killers in this in the war of the Crusades. It was the eunuchs. So man, this nigga got superhuman strength. Wow, but I'm sure they're they're injecting them with you know te um with yeah estrogen and stuff like that so they can grow boobies well, and grow all of that stuff. Counting, man. We ain't doing <laughs> counting, Rose, You better not go down this street. Sure, you never. So you don't have none of that over there. Oh yeah. Okay, so they doing it over there then. If I fight one of them, if I don't knock him out in five punches, I'm shooting him. Let me ask you this, man. We got to get out of that. Uh, <laughs> Please. When, when you when you think about it, man, Chris Brown. 
Uh, he just mm-hmm. dropped just a few days ago a diss track uh, against Quavo. Quavo was, the, you know, the uh, I think his nephew had got killed in Houston, you know, uh, and um, but. And, and 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 Chris kind of you know he brought up the fact that we wish it would have been you instead of him you know and but he also brought up the fact that he that, you know the the that the boys in red you know he he claimed Piru so he say act like you know like like we gonna be standing there in red you know what do you think about the artists and here I go again uh, that uh, portray these you know these situations in songs and say this is who we are. You know, is this a real thing? Is this relevant enough to? Is this a but part the boy of game? Qu- the boy Quavo, he had good sense. He apologized because Chris got hands. Correct. He 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 he's a black belt. Karate. I don't know. Did he apologize? I ain't heard he apologize. Oh well, he said, "I got it." On, a dude just sent it to me yesterday. Really? He said, "I'm sorry. I don't want no beef with you, Chris. I'm sorry. I don't want to fight you. I don't." He, I ain't know that. Yeah. You want to hear it? Yeah, I'm, uh, that's crazy. I, 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 yeah, had you heard that? I hadn't either, but I know they were going at it, but I didn't know it. But I could see it happening, you know what I'm saying? But I know J. Cole apologized. I remember that. That went crazy public. But I didn't know. Why is all these niggas starting beef songs and then apologizing all you of a sudden? You better because, hey, uh, the manuscript is over. When it came to real life and you find out that this little dancing dude ain't who you thought he was. Yeah, because he, he definitely is one of those guys who always was, you know, he even, you know, accused uh, uh, Quavo about hitting a wimp woman and all kind of stuff. It was in that song. I was listening to it, and I just thought about the fact of how he, you know, pretty much uh, he moved with authority. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He jumped from R&B to rap just to diss this guy. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So <laughs> these boys on another level now. You know what I mean? <laughs> this whole game started out. What do you think about rap music? It's been beefs from Biggie to... Uh, all Dirk and, and 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 all them people in Chicago. But here we go. And the crazy thing about it, about a girl. It was who about fu- a girl. Who f- whose girl? You know, uh, um, Ray J. I had her first. Who give a f- about first? I got her now, and yeah. I had a baby by her. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So we try this as, as as I don't know what happened with. The situation with, with Chris, Chris and, and Quavo. And, and, and like Chris said, well, shit, I your girl while she was with you. <laughs> I'm saying, wow. I, I didn't wait till she was, you got some ex and I'm not dealing with it anymore. So I'm, that's the significance, I guess, that the dude was bragging about he had had. Chris, I don't, I don't keep up with. I got enough problems. Of course, and, of course, but and, they just, you know, this spills out into the, in yeah, the public. So, so yeah, it's, but but the, the the songs came fast and heavy, man. And I mean, you know, is it something that they keep on wax? You know what I mean? This is something that you think about as well. Like, but is, that's but but if society, white America, didn't want this kind of confusion, they would never put it out. Wow. We are not allowed. We we can't do this shit independently. Chris had to have an okay from some white man to say, okay, yeah, you can do this. Wow. He he wouldn't have been able to do it for uh, Waylon Jennings or, or, or Rock Hudson. <laughs> Couldn't have made no diss track for them. But as long as it's one of us, we are allowed to do that. Wow. Man. So, um, you know, the fight is coming up with Tyson and um, Jake Paul. Jake Paul, yeah. What do you think That's about that gonna have in Dallas. Yeah, what do you think in about that fight? Do you think that Tyson should be back in the ring trying to fight? If he wants to. Who do you think going to win? Mike. Why? Because he's black. Any other reason you need to be there? <laughs> What you, when you when That's it, well, no, let me ask you a question. Since y'all asking all these things, you was in New York. What happened to this fight in New York? Bro? Whoa, whoa, whoa! I heard that this man got his ass whooped. I think the my my take on it because this is my first time speaking on it. Okay, I, I think when he came in three pounds over, which which you have to hydrate up after that. He's massively big. The last fight when he fought Tank, he had to drop down into a hundred and thirty. His natural bill is bigger, so he came in even drunk a beer on the on the way in. Drunk a beer for what? Oh, he didn't want to win. He no, he he. 
not the, the one who this won. This is Garcia. He, he, he building himself up. So really, when he went over... Wait a minute, who went over? Are you Garcia. Garcia. Uh, Ryan Garcia. He okay. drunk a beer when he did the weigh-in. How he came know? in went Because I'm Cause seeing he, it. I was I'm like, son, and I went to the fight. I, but I seen him do you it. You seen him drinking a beer? Yeah, yeah, drinking but when, when he weighed... Can, you can, you can YouTube, you can YouTube it. It's on YouTube. It. He jumped on scale. He jumped on scale and he drank a beer. And he was three pounds and he was over. three pounds over. So he and lost then, the weight. Then he hot, then, then that, you know, you hydrate up after that. So this dude is going to be huge when he fight him. You know, basically, D Devin Haney came in at weight, you know, and he's already a smaller frame guy. And, and I'm definitely not making no excuse for him. I'm saying, to me, he shouldn't have even took, did the fight. Once you come in and you don't care and you don't respect the way you the way in, right. why would I go on and fight you? I just don't think That's that. That's what I'm saying. I wouldn't even fight well, him because I'd have made him get down to that weight. You know what I mean? But another thing, you know, that night, I just feel like the bigger guy, really, Devin didn't stay away from me. He tried to brawl with him. This guy already bigger. There's no reason to brawl with this guy because you know already you gotta you you ain't you ain't got the knockout power that he has. You haven't been knocking out the guys. He has knocked out more guys than mm -hmm. you have. So the best thing to do, and this is my first time talking about it, but a technicality, I would have stayed away from him and, and, and went with the point system. Instead of grabbing him, holding him, I would have been really tap, tap, boom, getting back off of him. Right. You know what I mean? And that's why when you try to brawl with somebody that's way bigger than you, what you think going to happen? You see what I'm saying? So it, that's why he got drugged and put, you know, whooped up because okay. I wouldn't go in there like that. Not if I'm not that guy's size. You know what I mean? But all in all, them niggas walked away with a bag. I didn't get none of the money. So I'm upset about that, nigga. That's more important to me right there. They both okay. walked away with millions. Okay. okay. And at, at the end of the day, that's what they signed up for. You know right. what I'm saying? I'm a right. podcaster. You know? uh, so we're going to walk away with millions anyway. There you go. <laughs> We've been hearing this. For, for I've been hearing this for some years now that TikTok is going away. What? They better not take TikTok away. Um, Joe Biden just signed the bill Fuck today. Today, banning TikTok from the U.S. And they say in, a, in about the next nine months, TikTok will be none and void. It, it is going to be gone. But the CEO of TikTok is trying to tie it up in court, trying to fight it. Because a lot of people are so addicted to TikTok here in the United States, but they're... The government is worried about, you know, um, them spying on the U.S. through TikTok. Their information that, you know, the citizens are putting on there. Well, America's spying on them. <laughs> and they ain't even using TikTok. So, I mean, it, it, that's just like a jealous man is worried about a woman because he know he's doing so much dirty shit. He's putting it on her. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, America is the head of the beast. They've done more dirty shit, you know. If anybody should be uh, in a world court for atrocities on their citizens, America should have been indicted a long time ago. You dig what I'm saying? For the things that they've done to black people and some of their own people. So you got uh, Uncle Joe Biden, the, the, the head, the head of the wizards, of the Ku Klux Klan. You know, you think because Joe Biden set up under Obama for eight years that he's patro he's prone to Negro. No, he was sucking information how they could dis he, after he got he has not done one solid thing for blacks in America at all. He's helped gays, he's helped Koreans, but he never even spoke on George Floyd, huh? So you looking at this cracker that he's your savior and What's the other, what's the vice president name? Camilla Harris. Uh, how can this woman, and she's not black, actually, she's our color. She's not a black woman. She wakes up every morning, give it to a white man. So how much do she have respect or love for black people? She was the number one DA in, in, in Northern California, arrested nothing but black people, convicted them. So you got... Uh, Massa and Aunt your mama in the White House and Negroes think it's going to get better? So the, the spine, you know, yeah, the, it's nothing else that they can say about China. So, but you knew that when you let him bring TikTok here, huh? It ain't, it ain't, Maybe it, they think they didn't know that TikTok would be, make such a big revenue. You think it has all to do about the money? Maybe because so, the so, money is going to China. 
and not staying here in the U.S. It ain't no money staying here in the U.S. Everything we do is outsourced. We don't make our own cars. We don't make our own clothes. China been getting bread. So how are you stopping that? So what is Facebook doing? Facebook is big as TikTok, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Bigger. So goddamn, who they spying on? You ain't try to shut him. You ain't try try to shut white America down, huh? Yeah. So you saying TikTok should be saying it's cool when we when 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 they do it. It's a problem when I do it. Yeah. The same thing. <laughs> just that's the Negro situation, huh? It's cool when white America do it. It's a felony when we do it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask you about Suge Knight, man. He getting upset. He upset with Drake because uh, he used uh, uh, like an AI. To, 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 to put out Tupac's voice on a diss track that he went back and forth with them boys on. So, uh, Suge Knight called him out on it. What do you think about that, being that you, you know, you know about Suge and Tupac? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, Suge is standing up for count, so he can't get mad at nobody <laughs> about nothing, actually. So, I heard that someone was supposed to have been suing and gave him, um, but that was the media. It, 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 Suge is in Donovan. He ain't had no nothing to do with it. And it's just like if somebody say something about you right now, you my boy, I'm going to no, know what the f is wrong with you. How in the hell is Drake going to say something? I, I don't even know what it was about. It was, it was, it, he, it was he pretty much Lamar. brought, he put, yeah, he came, he went at Kendrick and, and all of them was coming at him, but Drake used AI, which is artificial intelligence, the voice of Tupac created it and put it on a, as a verse on the song against them niggas. And they're suing him now. And against, now they against, against, against Kendrick? Kendrick? Against mm -hmm. whoever was coming for I think it was Kendrick, and it was somebody else too. It was a couple of them coming at him. So he used AI, you know, he put Pac on the song with him, went at them Well, he better get his little white ass back to Canada. <laughs> Fuck around and get toe up. <laughs> I'm telling you. He, he, I, I, I come he didn't put, uh, what's the other little boy out of Canada? <laughs> Boulevard? Uh, huh? Justin Bieber? No, it's another one. They got the funny haircut. Um, damn, what is that dude's name? He's a singer. Um, the Weekend. Ain't The Weekend from Canada? I don't Canada? know if he from over there. Yeah, he from Canada, Montreal, Canada. Do you know them voices when they put like a Tupac or whoever? A well, if, I, if he ain't from Canada, motherfuckers, don't be <laughs> inboxing me telling me I don't know what the I'm talking about because I, I I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm like Charles. Don't believe shit I say. But listen, when you think about like like the the way that they can take and use technology to recreate voices now, it's crazy how they can take and make your voice right now like we're having this and recreate it and recreate music from people who already passed and make new lyrics to it. Like, um, do you think that there should be a stipulation? Like, if you use somebody's voice and, and create that to where they should have legal actions at you if you do it? Well, White America been doing it for you. We just heard about it. But the government been doing it since the 50s. You know what I'm saying? Mission Impossible wasn't a Mission Impossible. It was, it was just showing you what these crackers have been doing. So when we get it, it become a felony. You know, we didn't learn AI, and we can transfer voices now. Whoa, whoa! If he can use, it should use my voice. And I don't care. I need as much help as I can get because I want to tell my parole officer it wasn't me. It was his voice. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I, I just I look at it, man. Like I listen to some of it, and it's really good. Is that like, right? It sounds just like the person. Yeah. yeah. You have you heard any of it? You have to check it out. You can YouTube it, and and I promise you, when you turn that music on, yeah. it's like they re recreated some music, and like they still alive, right? Right. You know, and so you gonna see. Well, they doing hologram. They bringing hologram, you know, all kind of so stuff. It's it's like they're just giving you what they've already been doing, and uh, so I I don't think it's a it's Suge pissed it, about it. So Suge don't like it. Suge said it's wrong. They shouldn't do it, and he and he called Drake out on it. Okay, stop playing with uh, Pac. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. But like you say, he locked up, so I don't know how far he can take it. Yeah, he, I mean, he, he has his, what he he did that on his on that call. <laughs> yeah, how you like that? I ain't asked you about that. I, I haven't even heard. You haven't heard it. No. Well, yeah, it, it goes in. Him and Dave Mays put that together, and so uh -huh. you you get to hear from him now every so, now and then. Yeah, every you know everybody is uh, trying going, to figure it out. Trying trying to figure out what he gonna say next. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And so, they don't know because he got he know a lot, don't he? He know a lot. He know a lot. 
So, yeah. As uh, soon as I finish this little situation, we're going to go in on death row. Okay, and, we're going to yeah. talk about that. Oh, oh yeah, we're we, we going. But the thing I, I know about you, man, is that you come from a litany of, of, of experience, history. Um, you told me that... Uh, you know, you went out of town, uh, and when you went out of town, you checking in. You really believe in the check-in oh, system. Oh, yeah. Bringing up that check I, I had a, a, a amazing experience. It, you know, I've been in the streets, and most my 25 years of prison, I done met somebody from every state. So I've never been in the state. I've been in Texas selling dope, Florida selling dope, and I've never got jacked because I don't put myself in that position. I rely on the people that live there to let me know. But I had never really come up under it. I was in Milwaukee uh, last week. Uh, 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 Nate Motley uh, okay. took me out there with uh, 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 Shake James. Shake uh, was with Adidas and they had the 414 launching of the new Adidas and, and Shape was real good friends with Jam Master J and he kept the uh, the relationship with the Adidas so they letting him do these Adidas lines so we came out there and so I checked in with Brother James, one of the brothers out of Milwaukee and he was showing me around, showing me the, 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 where to be, where not to be and one Saturday we walked up into a restaurant. We walked into the restaurant. It was a brother standing at the door of the restaurant. When he when I walked in, I, he opened the door. I walked past him. I heard him say something, but I didn't pay attention to it. And when I walked past him, we walked in. Brother James asked me, say, did you hear what dude just said to you? I said, no, I thought he was talking to you. So he said, no, he said something to you. He said, you know what that meant? I said, no. And I had uh, my star and crescent had my chain, and he said he saw the, the five stars, he's a vice lord. So you're a vice lord, and he was giving you the greeting, right? So we see him walk to the back, he came back to the door, he said, yeah, he on security. We walked to the back, when we walked to the back, it's 12 guys back there. They all back there eating, and whoop. we walk up, they start looking, we sit down, they're looking at me, looking at me for a minute. So one of the brothers gets up and Ask me a question. And I'm like, no. So, Brother James said, well, no, he he be on boss talk, you know. He, he said, oh, man, I, bro, yeah, that is Ayatollah. Wow. Man, look here, bro, we be watching, your shit is real, whoop the whoop the wham. We, we vice lords, can we take a picture with you? Wow. They take their stuff off, they got the the uh, the crown, um, they got the top hat, and, and the stick, the vice lords, you know. So I'm like, man, that's, that's cool as hell, right? But my point is, and shout out to uh, uh, to to uh, their president Swift, uh, real good brother. But now they we're in Milwaukee. Swift them came out there. They're from Indiana. Okay. They they not from Milwaukee. Yeah, they're from Indiana. They doing a they're doing a, a annual out there. So here, you know. It could have went all bad if I hadn't been who I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and came up with the with the wrong symbol or or, or did the wrong thing, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm just saying that it's important on not just the check in. It's important to stay relevant on who in the hell you around and your surroundings. Yeah, yeah. So you go someplace and not. Uh, show you their pictures but um they are when you go someplace and not know where you, man biggest mistake that brought pmb when he went to you should never go to roscoe's chicken and waffle on maine and manchester that's uh uh that's a genuine death sentence you know yeah no i, I definitely i definitely get it um the thing i i think about man is is that mm -hmm. You, you know, from the time, you know, we, I've been dealing with you guys, I always, you know, I'm going to call you or like you hung out with me and appreciate you for hanging out with me over there. And, and when we was in L.A., when we was all we was all over the place out there. Oh, that's them right there. Yes, sir. That's some right there. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So them boys, they seen y'all out there. Yeah. 
You Man, know. and they see that Nicholas, that Crescent, yeah, hey. yeah. So you know, you see him right there. Yeah. So that's in Milwaukee. Yeah, that's in Milwaukee. We so just, they watch Boss Talk. They, they watch Shout Boss Talk. Shout out to them niggas in Milwaukee. Hey, they watch sw- Boss Talk. Swift. Shout out to hey, Myron. I just talked to him this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Big Swift and, and his and his boys. So it was just like and another another situation happened a couple of years ago. We're in Chicago. We're in Chicago at, at this little meeting. And this girl, this lady walks over to my partner. And the other guy that was with us, he's from Louisiana. And homegirl walks over to him and say, check this out. Um, tell homeboy to put his hat either to the back or to the front. He got his hat tilted to the side. He in the wrong environment. <laughs> because now that represents something to the left or to the right. <laughs> See, either put it all the way straight or put it to the back. Because you can't rock this. A girl came and told him this. Wow. You know, in California was a time, Crips where they rag in their left side. Bloods where it is in their right side. If you come with a red rag on your left side, somebody go, who, who, who are you? What are you doing, bro? You feel wow. what I'm saying? It's all. So this, it, it's not as prevalent in California, but these are, and these dudes, were, they wasn't no teenagers. These is grown men that got an organization. Mm. that run by the rules and have a structure. Mm. And if you interrupt that structure, it may not be good for you. So checking in is healthy for folks. It, it when, Before you take a trip, you get a road map and you put your GPS in, you check in. So it's important that I, I just relate to these youngsters that's going out wild and out going in these other states, especially we got the biggest body count in California coming to other states. Because you come with that California shit, come back in a box. Wow. Because you ain't having it in Dallas. And man, hey, man, we from Compton, we do this and this. Okay, who is that nigga? Wow. Sizing you up. And ain't nobody told you no different. Wow. I got to ask you about, uh, I got to ask you about um, Rick Ross. Uh, Rick Ross, um, you know, for, not the the real Rick Ross, not um, the rapper Rick Ross. I never asked you about that, but 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 he, he, I think, okay, Rick, he went to jail and Rick Ross came out, but Rick Ross, Rick Ross, uh, Rick Ross was, was a, a guard in jail. He was a guard in he jail didn't too. Asked him to use his name. Told him he was. Did he, he was, ask him? I don't he, think he asked him. He, he, he from allegedly, allegedly, I wasn't there. <laughs> I asked at that time, Rick had a life sentence, didn't think he was getting out. And he like, man, I, I like your name. I like your name. Um, I, I, yeah, man, I, I, I'm trying to do some rapping and I'm doing this. So I guess Rick, I wasn't there. So, okay, bro, go ahead, you know, just look out for me, right? So he came out and used the name, he's the hip hop police, you know? So, once a guard, always a guard. You know what I'm saying? You're the police, you know? So so you so you had when this all was happening, you were where you was out you was in, in the streets during that time, right? No, I was in prison. And you heard about this whole situation? No, well, when this the, I was on the street when Rick Ross came and allegedly made some of my homeboys, he was guards with uh so a matter of fact, Ducky works with him right now, you know, one of the one of my homies, uh he he worked with work with Rick and he was the in, other Rick Ross, the, the rapper other, Rick Ross, the, the rapper Rick Ross, Ricky Rose. He he still works with him to this day. Yeah, I believe. Okay. I, the last time I I checked, I think he might be the only rapper that was a was an officer. He was the only rapper that that I've seen do that. You know what I mean? Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah, some of them is undercover. Really? Yeah. You know, okay, so, so. so I was getting to the point. I know you've seen, uh, I had um, uh, Rainwater on here. He's a frequent guest of Boss Talk 101, oh, just yes. like yourself. Yeah. And uh, I asked him a question. Who do he think had the most, you know, the the, the most successful run in, the, in this drug era? Was it Big Meech or was it uh, uh, Freeway, Ricky Ross. Freeway Ricky Ross or Frank Lucas? And he said, Rick really didn't, you know, he didn't do nothing. He didn't have nothing. You've you seen it. Yeah, so little brother is a fan. 
He, 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 he's, a, he's a TV hype man. He don't know the actual facts. Rick started in 1982, 1983. He had a 10-year run for three and a half, maybe four years. The police didn't even know who he was. Allegedly, the police say they made a couple of busts and Rick Ross walked right past him. They thought he was a crackhead. He stayed so low key. You dig what I'm saying? But for 10 years, it's written that he made over $900 million in his run. This is what white America say that he made over $900 million. The Contra Costa, the, the agent, stole $40 million from him and put it over to their 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 drug, the, uh, their, took the money from him. Went in his bank account, did some shit, all in his foreign accounts, but you talk about success, he wasn't flamboyant. He's not flamboyant, he don't wear jewelry, but he put over, in California alone, he, you know, you look at well, Rick Ross and, and the drug. Do you realize how many people? This is an entrepreneur that put black people to work. You got dudes that never graduated from high school became accountants. Do you know how long it takes you to count a million dollars? He was making from one to three million dollars a day. Do you know how you have to put up transporting and put a transportation department together to transport drugs from one place to another, to another state? But isn't that what all of them was doing? All of them was transporting drugs from one state to the next. So, but I think that the thing that he was talking about is the fact that like, when you look at BMF, BMF was a movement. With Rick, it was just him. It didn't seem like he was creating a movement for the people. It wasn't no movement. BMF wasn't no movement for the people. It was a bunch of drug addicts being being in, went from one state to another, not putting nothing against them. They was a gang, a, a dope gang. What benefit did he, he didn't buy no projects. He In his whole term, they made $270 million. That's what they made. $270 million. And they put a couple of people to work, a couple of people, 189 of them went to prison. Rick didn't take all his homies to prison with him. He wasn't flamboyant. Like, how, how many people you think got away with that? That got legitimate jobs from working with Freeway Rick and his drug on his age, that he made women learn how to do different things, how to cut up this. This girl's right now working in the pharmacy from cutting drugs with Rick Rose. Ooh. Mm. So when you look at the benefit, the greatest good for the greatest number, he had more money than meets them. He had more product than meets them. They said he did over 900 tons of cocaine in, the, in, in a 10 year period. So when you look at the actual facts, Frank Lucas, another in the heroin world. Uh, I mean, uh, Frank, uh, Frank, Frank Matthews. Yeah, that's Frank no, Frank. no, I'm talking about Frank Matthew. Okay. okay. Frank Ma Frank Lucas, I, I don't know about him. There's yeah. just some, to come up. But the money man in New York was Frank Matthews. Frank Matthews, he was so vicious, I think it was the Gambini, now don't get me wrong, one of them crime <laughs> families, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's it wasn't the Gambinos, it was the Jenny Vunchies. I'm from Compton. There ain't none of them was in Compton. But he bought a house right across the street from the mob. And when they found out about it, he said, if anything happened to me and my children, all of y'all is gone. He had a pressure so hard and pushing the He went to court, had a million dollar bail in the 70s, and walked out of court and nobody knew where he'd been. Nobody even heard from him since. Mm. Wow, man. Frank Matthews. Wow. So when you when, when you talk about big like we look at Snowfall, Snowfall is not directly about Freeway, Freeway Rick. Mm -hmm. It's about Waterhead Bo too, Bo Bennett out of California. When they arrested him in his house in Tempe, uh, Arizona, he had a, a, a underground safe. He had so much money they had to weigh it. He said it was 70 tons. Mm. Wow. 24 years old. So when you talk about rich, this meets them coming in 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 the shadow of a gang. We can we I'm now talking about Michael Conception's business, but he is the big dog. 
When you talk about a gangster being rich and elevated, never had arrest. That man ain't walked since 78, I think. Shot 11 times and do better paralyzed than niggas do with five legs. Damn. Michael Conception. Michael Conception. I've heard you mention his name before. Melvin talks about him. That's Melvin's homeboy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But he's the biggest dog on the West Coast. To this day. I I wasn't there. Allegedly, (laughs) before he (laughs) left, went to the Dominican Republic. He had a house so big in... In Sino, I was working for a family lived up on the hill, and Mike came up there. He wanted to. He had his house built from the ground up. Their houses was fifteen million dollars to buy them. He got a house, a multi mansion. He got. Uh, you go in, in his in his bathrooms. They got a fireplace on this end and a TV on this end. In the bathroom. Wow. With the sunken tub. Got the man studio. He used to shut the strip club down every Tuesday, and he would buy out Barbary Coast, um, what's the other one? Stars, and have all the strippers come to his house. Mm. You know, balling out of control. I'm gonna go back to uh, J Cole apologizing, man. We've seen a lot of different beef uh, in rap. You know what I mean? We've seen a lot of different people diss each other, whether it be over any sports, all kind of stuff. Do you think it made him look bad to apologize? He 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 made a song and dissed uh, Kendrick, right? It was Kendrick. Uh, J. Cole did. Oh, okay. And when he dissed him, he came back and he apologized and said, "Hey, man, I didn't mean. I don't even. That ain't the energy I want to even do." Do well, I mean, that's a man. That's a man. Apology don't make you weak. If you did something in there, see, Negroes, we got sorry mixed up. You know what I'm saying? It, it, they say we only do two things with sorry. You feel sorry and you say sorry, right? But when you dealing with the system, if you walk down the go down the street and you know your tags ain't right, and you feel sorry, like dang, when the police pull you over, right? Then you go to court and you have to say sorry, right? And then the judge fine you. So you have to do we don't compensate for sorry. So I mean if he dissed Kendrick and he was man enough to say, man, bruh, I, I didn't mean it. I, I, I applaud that. Most niggas would just do shit and just think, hope he stick their head in the ground, think you ain't going to kick him in the ass. say nothing. Yeah. Wow. Well, man, that's old shit. It's just like it was yesterday to me. Wow. I think I think I kind of like when they go back and forth with the beef a little bit. You know, it makes for a little, you know, a, a little machismo. It's got a little. little uh, See, you, you. You're advertising chaos. You, you well, kind of like not it. If they, no, if they, if they, as long as they don't kill each other. But they, somebody gonna get killed not all the time. Every time they on them did did that beefing and stuff. Them boys wasn't killing each other. Who? And, and the last time Kendrick, this ain't the first time Kendrick done went at Drake and them. So it didn't nobody die. It, it, it was basically on wax. Somebody dying is the streets is going. Man, it's just like in prison. I see what you're saying. You said somebody gonna get it regardless. So, man, yeah. it, me and you, me and you can have argument. In the morning, my homies are like, what that nigga say to you, man? And your homies is going with it. Somebody got to leave that prison or die. Because just on the floor, we can't have it. And then your people can't have it because it shows weakness. So if Kendrick's associated with Compton and everybody backing Kendrick, and then hear somebody say something off the left, some, some crip going to say something. And somebody died. You don't. You didn't even know it because of that. Wow, that makes sense. All of these things happen, bro. So it we, ain't just gang. When they hear these rap music and this, this, and this, and that, and we start pulling triggers. So that that means with with that what just happened with Chris, it could, it could spill into the streets with him and Quavo because of, of course because it's because people that's with him. And I agree with that. I just told somebody that it will make people around you, even in your camp. Oh, feel away, and they may go on and experience. Hey, man, I'm not. No, nah, when I see that nigga, it's up. Yeah. And, and 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 Chris might not even be around. Quavo might not even be around. So you saying it can spill in the street? It can spill gossip then kill more shit than actual facts, bro. That's real. That's so real. That's real, man. Like I said, it's just something. But but you know, when hip hop first came out, this is hip hop. Yeah. But then yeah. Compton made gangster rap. That's what I'm saying. That was y'all did that. We did it, and we own it. 
So shit, and because you jump off, I jump off the mountain, you gonna jump too? Texas, get you some sense, like Charlie said. Fuck California. <laughs> <laughs> so I just like I said my thing is with you man anytime I get with you I just enjoy the conversation um, it's a great thing right when when you come on the show man you down here in Texas man like I said I always gonna have you on this show this show don't go unless you on it come period. on there boy you, you, you about know what I'm taking you to dinner for now <laughs> but I, but you, I, I had a good time at that restaurant you took me to in LA a fix it. Man, I, I enjoyed myself. It wasn't that good. Ah, thank you, man, for taking us over there, man. We had a good time, didn't we? Yes, I just enjoyed hanging out with you. That's it. Girl, you know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> man, that's just the way it is, man. And like I said, man, the, the, the one thing I can say, man, you never cease to amaze me when it comes down to it. You know, you, you educated me on a lot of the ways that, like, like is it getting any better? I got to ask you this since I brought it up. Is it getting any better in the streets of L.A.? When yeah. it comes down to the Crips, the Bloods, the the the, the Pyrus, all that, is it getting better? Is it, is there a ceasefire? Is everything going well? We can't well? do nothing but ceasefire. Mexicans is killing us now. Okay, wow. And shit, we, and we just ain't got it together, you know. One of my homies was just telling me the other day, I just went and got my little hair cut, and was talking about how Compton Vario dresses is just going in Campanella Park, a neighborhood, and they just hitting up on the wall blatantly. You know, like, fuck you niggas. We, we doing this. This is our hood now. Wow. Just hitting up on walls. But we'll fight each other. But, but it just so happened, brother was saying that they was up on Rosecran, hitting up by the 7-Eleven, and some of the Nellas bust back at their ass. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So it, we getting pushed into a corner where we're going to have to fight back. And it's going to have to be collectively. You can't let one hood go and think, oh, that's Jimmy. We have to get collectively just because we black. And when I say bombed in California, I, like I said, I'm not set tripping. Compton was the first black run city west of the Mississippis. By 1970, we were 69% of the population, a up and bustling black community, black businesses everywhere. Today, in 2024, we're 14% of the population. Mexicans are 68% of the population. And we don't have but one black restaurant in the whole city of Compton. And when at 5 o'clock, Miss Alma's place, tear down, close up, you got nowhere to eat. Wow. You know, like you say, people invite you to Compton, they invite you to the park. <laughs> Meet us at Gonzalez. Grown men don't go to the park. Pedophiles is hanging in the bar. Wow, that's crazy, but it's real. You know, so we've lost so much ground. If Compton gets taken over, it's just like losing the Alamo. It's no more black life. You lost Rosewood. You lost uh, uh, Black Wall Street. We lost Allenworth. You lost all of this, and we never tried to get it back. Now, the only thing we have less is that 10 square miles. Wow. We fought in every war in America since they came here on the Plymouth Rock. We've lost blood. We've lost lives. We've been suffering. And out of 50 states, we didn't get one? That's bad economics, man. Wow. Out of 50, black people didn't get one. Didn't get one. But you can go all in California and find little Saigon, little Armenia, little Bangladesh. Where little Negro land? Wow. That's crazy. That's crazy. But it's real. That's the fact. And we bickering over who said what and why you saying this. Nigga, quit. Like Charlie said, don't worry about what I say. Do what I do. That's real. Do what the fuck I do. Wow. Every day I try to make a change. Let me ask you this. When you, what, what was the, and I, I probably asked you this before, but when you came home, what year did you come home from prison? 96. In 96, when you came home? 95. 95. When you came home from prison after being locked up, how long did that stint go? 10 years. 10 years. What was the biggest thing that you wanted to accomplish? To never go back to prison again. And you done it. And shit, I ain't been back. <laughs> <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't break, if you don't bend, you're going to break. A lot of those guys that got out and that you knew back then have passed away, right? Mm -mm -mm. Not, it ain't but like five of us left. Five of y'all left. Yeah. Who would have thought that, you know, 
after all this time, you know, you'll be in Milwaukee or in LA like we was there, and people be walking up saying, "Hey, man, never would have, never would have <laughs> out of Compton, that's OG, California." Hey, that's OG Brown. That's how I, I yeah, talk about, man. Yeah, shit, they mad about it too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I got, I got one question, oh, okay. but I gotta say, down. I, I gotta say. You, you look good. This that question. You cooking dinner tomorrow? Okay. <laughs> oh, um, I gotta say, um, you make getting older look good because. Yeah. Yeah. How, what, what's the secret? I, first of all, it's what no is secret. the secret? Because it's, you don't even look your age. He don't even uh, walk, he walk, walk my ass than me. Like, you look like, shoot. We be going places, I be like, this You look like you friend. might be 60. Okay. But I know you not. Okay. So what's the secret? People want to know. They really want to know? They really want to know. Here we go. I knew I you had to set up, man. <laughs> I saved myself. Because you look, always fly. Look at your hairstyle. Man, your hairstyle and they mad is slamming. Oh, my goodness. What they, they mad for? Because they want to wear it? They, they want it. If, if you wouldn't have been eating wound, your hairline wouldn't have been all back there. God, don't, don't be mad at me. <laughs> Damn it. I'm just saying. Wow. It's one meal a day following the program. One I meal a day. I eat one meal a day. Wow. wow. How long have you been eating one meal a day? For the last 20, 26 years. And you eat whatever you want for that one meal or you, no, do, you just, eat healthy? I, I, uh, I don't know how to cook, I rob banks. So I eat a Subway sub veggie with an avocado. So you don't eat meat? No, wow. fish and fowl. That's it? Yeah. Wow. Very, very rarely, most, most daily I eat veggies or salads. And you don't drink alcohol? No. And you work out daily? To keep these young niggas up off of me, I got this <laughs> shit. I'm gonna do some, some uh, yeah, keep that shit rocking. Okay, the, nec the next thing I see popping up, keep popping up, Lil Uzi Vert. Oh yeah, yeah, he don't know who Lil Uzi Vert is. Do you know? Hold on, I he gotta show you. gonna show, show him the show, episode? I'm just gonna show you this picture. You might. Might. Just show me when he, when he ran across the stage, is that what you're you talking know, about? No, you just have this one. The, yeah, the, this picture of him. That's Lil Uzi Vert right here. We're in all red. He a trans transgender? No, he's not a transgender. <laughs> what the f is wrong with him? He be on stage doing splits and everything else. Okay. So, so you indict me because he got a red on. No, I'm just saying that. I didn't say that. I'm just saying that. He ain't from he, Compton. I'm just saying he got, he wearing all red right here. Okay. That's whole colors. Okay. Look. Why is you, why is you, why is you, you love putting this, why is you, she's tough, ain't she, man? Hey, oh, my God. She done put you on the spot about he something. Got, he got all red on, and he got his head kicked up like a sissy. <laughs> the fuck, what's he his ran, name? He ran, uh, Lil, Lil Uzi, Uzi Vert. Vert. Yeah, he ran across stage with a bag. The other At Coachella. Day. At Coachella, and uh, it looked, it was a purse. A bag of what? It was a purse. <laughs> he, he grabbed it, put it on his arm, and. It, I looked that up and he scooted on cross stage. That might have been the same time it yeah, matched, but it was the same on. time. And he and, and, and I said, Where that, he from? I don't. I think. Where is he from? Texas. Oh, no, he yeah, ain't from Texas, <laughs> man. From Texas. <laughs> <laughs> then he came from Texas. I don't know, but he, is he from Atlanta? Oh, oh yeah. Well, you see, if he from Atlanta, that explains it. That explains it. Shit. What do you think is gonna happen with man? They keep pushing this boy, uh, Young Thug, in this courtroom, man. What is that? What kind of trial is this? It's been going on for years. Young Thug, what are you? Yeah, doing? he he got that Rico charge. He won the boy in Atlanta. That woman put in there for that Rico charge. Okay. And it been going on for. He been going to court for a minute. Like yeah. I don't understand it. I'm like they got they, they really spending some money going to that courtroom yeah, like they that. They just break. You got. Them. Then they'll send him to prison. See, look at it. Oh yeah, that that man, he he got some <laughs> anal problems. He Philadelphia. You see how he run across that stage? Oh, he run across that, don't he? And this dude do he think he But they say a, he, he he not he not like that. He not like that. <laughs> think he do, you think he's doing it for crap? What's the basketball player wasn't like that either? Rodman. Dennis Rodman. He wore a dress and he did it for shenanigans. But he see? dated a lot of females. Yeah, but I'm saying that's what Dennis Rodman said. He came in to be a basketball player, and the system wanted a clown, so he just fulfilled his contract. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that, that was his take on it, you know what I'm saying? Hell, what y'all going through. Yeah. I came to be a but basketball really player. really was a damn good basketball player. Could yeah. really rebound some balls and get get job done. I guess. And the yeah. way how he was dressing, what he would do, a lot of people thought he was gay, but he wasn't. Yeah. 
No, so he wasn't. Yeah, but he got, you know, sometimes you got to put on to get on. Mm-hmm. So some people can can take it, okay, and some people can buy it. Well, no, I ain't going to do that, you know. So that's your own personal choice. But don't come back and after you've done it, indict me for it. You know, that's that other boy that's uh, the big sissy that's married to the white woman. He, I know he's on Snossages. That's on um, Who? Cruz. His name is Terry, Terry Cruz. Cruz. Yeah. You can look at He got that Alpo gl- glow in his mouth. What you the know, j- just around his. Why would you say that? I done seen sissies all, uh, most of my life. I know a sissy when I see one. Or the DL. He look at that man and you his, just saying that because of how he acted in um Friday. No, he said a man grabbed his ass. Who, uh, did. Yeah. He said somebody. Oh, he touched me. And he left. I, I knocked the nigga touch me and see who you the Undertaker. <laughs> <laughs> so then you talking about oh he touched me and you married to a white woman she touched you too finger somewhere. Damn, man. OG Pyro in the building. Ayatollah Mar back on Boss Talk 101 one more again. Here we go. Check it, man. Make sure you guys check these comments, man. Thank you so much, man. We love you. Check these comments, man. Make sure. Hey, hey, not the comments. Why am I saying the comments? <laughs> check like out these clips. It's coming up next. Yeah. These clips, you're going to love what, hey, the OG showed up and showed out, man. And, and I'm reading these damn comments, too. <laughs> I <laughs> think <laughs> the comments is the devil. What? <laughs> I've been working on it, though. Hey, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a boss is talk.